So uh, good morning. I am, as most of you know, uh, I know Maureen Brown, and uh, I'll be your facilitator for the day. The workshop is called uh, a boot camp, and uh, I call it a boot camp because, um, and I think it's important to just let you know at, at the start that you know usually with a workshop, uh, when you go in, you know there's time for some of the nice things, you know, to kind of, uh, you know lean into the issues and it's really about talking about the issues and the, the, we'll do some of that but the primary focus of today is going to be to bring you together we're going to introduce some concepts uh, and then fairly quickly if I'm here on my feet more than 10 minutes delivering anything it becomes a sermon and you're, you're authorized to stop me <laughs> so I'm allowed 10 minutes uh, 15 at the most uh, near the focus sections but I'll introduce and we'll talk around these concepts and ensure that but then we'll put you to work. And so what we'd like you to do, most importantly, is to bring your own diversity challenges uh, to the table. Um, I know there's a cross-section of organizations, and so there will be varying levels of disclosure as to what you're comfortable with. But that's not the important thing is for you to talk about the scenarios you're experiencing and use those as the basis of your discussion. Okay, let's jump right in. Um, so, and some of you are here for both modules and some for this module only. So uh, this module is no feel do. Um, almost all that no can do. <laughs> no, feel, and do. Uh, steps to build our cultural competence and, uh, and inclusion. So as, as, the, as the title suggests, we're going to talk about what are some of the things that, that we need to know, that your organization needs to know in order to strategically manage or to derive the maximum benefits of diversity. Secondly, and, and this, we'll, we'll, we'll do this at sort of one level this morning, and then this afternoon, we actually return to the same themes, but we, we intensify them, and we do um, them through, uh, we look at them through hands-on activities and games and so on. Uh, but whether this morning or this afternoon, the idea is there are some things we need to know at the, at the, at the intellectual level, but there's also some things that we need to feel, because we are human beings, and when we talk about diversity, sometimes we tend to make it almost like this, um, this object thing out there, Really, it's about people and, and their relationships together and how those relationships determine what your organization looks and feels like and, and, and ultimately its success. And finally, there are some things that need to be done. Sometimes, again, we talk about diversity in very theoretical terms, but at the end of the day, you're all here at some level where you're, you're expected to do something in order to create an inclusive environment. And so that's uh, basically what you know, we're gonna be, be covering. Um, on page three, I'll just point you to, um, as a way of framing the discussion, uh, a couple of quotes we have there. One is from the Human Rights Code of Ontario. And the code uh, talks about creating a climate of understanding and mutual respect. And uh, often when we think about the Human Rights Code, we think about you know, the rules and, and complaints and so on. But really, the purpose of all of this is to create an atmosphere of respect and an understanding. And really that's what you're trying to create, whether internally in, ter in terms of staffing or externally as you engage with your communities. The other um, definition of inclusion that uh, is one of my favorites and um, it will run through today is from Ontario Health Nexus. And it says an inclusive environment is one where people of diverse backgrounds experience, and the key words here are both the feeling and the reality of belonging. Sometimes our diversity programs are built around the feeling stuff. Feeling is important, but if people only feel, you know, oh yeah, this is great, uh, their reality oftentimes can be very different. And um, as leaders and directors and so on, you may not always be the first to know. And sometimes, unfortunately, it's after a complaint or some drop in productivity or something happens and you realize that people are not as included as they, you thought they were. And so we're gonna talk about some of that. And uh, finally, we're going to talk about inclusion as an environment that leverages diversity, an environment that has a broad bandwidth. So it means that the styles and behaviors that we have traditionally considered to be the norm, now with a diverse environment, we're going to broaden that and say, do we need to redefine what we consider the norm? And you know, do we need to 
take a deep breath and, 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 and redefine what we consider to be acceptable behaviors because as we're going to see, what's considered to be the right and the norm oftentimes is based on a traditional template that is not necessarily in keeping with the diversity of the population uh, currently. And so we're going to be um, talking about that. On page four, the assumption is here is, is that you're here for your own cultural competence but also that you are here to gather some skills that you can share with your organization and, and hopefully use as part of building your diversity program. And um, to that end, um, or certainly my commitment and my hope, and, and I'm pretty sure all our commitment is together today to maximize the learning experience. It's, it's a very engaging um, you know, interactive session. It won't be lecture style. And so uh, my hope is that we will have honest conversation uh, within whatever limits you have, of course, but uh, you know we certainly can have honest conversation, and um, and that will help us to learn from each other's experiences. So this slide shows you the percentage of the population that's replenished through immigration, and the percentage that's replenished through natural increase. So the red at the bottom is natural increase, and uh, you'll see that from, uh, if you compare between 1976, and I'll kind of slip across here so I can. So 1976 to 1991, you'll see how natural increase replenished the population. From about 1996, you begin to see immigration, which is the, uh, the, the blue part, replenish more and more and more and higher percentages of the population until by 2031, which is in another 20 years, um, Canada would have gone into uh, uh, leading immigration to replenish the population 100%. And so this is really important to know because sometimes you may have staff or, you know, sometimes organizations, they know it, yet they don't know it. But this is very serious because, especially when we consider where uh, immigrants are going to, are coming from increasingly. You know, what does your organization need to know in when it thinks of, when it looks at the ethnocultural composition the changes that are happening, what does your organization need to know? No, you, you need to know the implications of diversity for you. By 2021 and, and, and the next 10 years after that, the population is going to be replenished 100% by immigrants from countries that are not European countries. So you need to know what this means for who's gonna buy your stuff, who's gonna volunteer for you if you don't have the reputation that attracts them. Sorry, Manji, do you remember? Yeah, very, very, just exactly what you just said. I was gonna say that some institutions will be a little bit slower, like the universities, because there's less choices. But when you're talking about, again, products and services, banks, oh, yeah. uh, people have choices, and those institutions are moving pretty quickly because they know <laughs> they have to cater to. It's, it is about the bottom line. It is about the clients that they attract. Um, and so, again, I think even in, in those uh, organizations, we get more diversity at the front line, but it's taking them time to sort of get that at the higher levels. But I think there's more of a push because it's a more of a pressing issue for them. Exactly, as you said, an organization plans over a period of time. So an organization that is short-sighted and just looking at what's happening in the next five years needs to know that in five years or in 10 years' time, you know,